So we're going to look at setting up the Amazon S3 service today with the 7000 model as well as the 5000 model. What I have here is uh, a 7120R that's fully populated and I have a 5200. This is available on all the 7000 or 5000 models. You can first log in and we're going to create a share. So I'll create a new share. Uh, we want to make this all lowercase. That's due to some regional restrictions that Amazon S3 has, is it works only with lowercase, even though you can make uppercase shares. So I'm going to create an Amazon S3 folder. You can use uh, any of the attributes that you want for this. going to disable recycle bin on it and we'll create that share. I'm going to do the same thing on the 7000. Next thing you want to do is go into your Amazon S3 account. So sign into the AWS area. Uh, they have the console that's up there. If you sign directly into Amazon Web Services, you want to go to My Account and into the AWS Management Console, which is what this is. Um, as an AWS account contains an S3 account, and you can get a free one or pay for the service. So once you go into S3, then we're going to create new buckets. I'm going to create a bucket for each, the 5,000 and for the 7,000 separately. So we'll create... We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to have the 7,000 and the 5,000 all lowercase. Okay, after you create those, I'm going to show you this, uh, the 5,000 first. You're going to go to your web services and we're going to do the configuration. Um, this is this the button to enable and disable it, so we'll do that after we get it configured. So we're going to go and configure this and edit it. If you've edited this before, it's going to retain those settings even after it's disabled, uh, but it will pull out the, the access key. So I had configured this before. We're going to go ahead and configure this now. The settings that you want to use is your target folder. So let's hit browse. We'll go to the Amazon S3 directory that we created. We're going to leave connection type standard and set the connection protocol to HTTPS. This will make sure everything is encrypted when it transfers through. And we need to know our bucket name, which we created as the TS5000. The access key ID and access key are going to be inside your Amazon Web Services credentials area. So to get to that, we'll go back to our Amazon services, the My Account and Console, and security credentials. Here, we're going to put in username and password. And scroll down. Now, there are some issues that this has. Uh, one of the restrictions that we have is the key, which you can see. Um, here's your user ID, but the key you have to show. So when you show it, we need this key to have a plus symbol in it and no slash. So if I were to show this key, uh, which I've already pre-generated as well, there is no plus symbol and there is no slash, and this key is not going to work properly. Um, it is randomly generated. You can't create this yourself. So if you don't get one with a plus, you need to close it. You need to make it inactive. Yes, and then delete it. After you delete it, you'll be able to make another access key. It'll randomly generate it. Check the key. Again, I don't have a plus, and unfortunately have to cycle through this a couple times. It took me about five times until I got one with a plus and no slash as it's randomly generated from Amazon. We have here now a plus with no slash, so I will copy and paste this. Um, often you might want to paste it into something like Notepad as you'll get some white space sometimes at the end. So this one, does, I didn't get a white space on it, but if you have any white space at the end, it's going to add that as a character and it could give you an issue with logging in. So I'm pasting this information in there, we're going to hit OK. It's always going to say it's, it's disabled, change it, restart the service. So we'll hit OK and activate the service. 
this is going to populate a couple directories on our share which I can show you here now that we've created the Amazon s3 directory on our 5200 we're gonna go inside there you'll see the WB uh, WBFS as well as Amazon s3 in here is where you can map this directory mount it somewhere uh, this is where you're gonna to want to do your copying of your files so I'm gonna copy some some files that I have pre-made so I can show you how it works and I'm gonna paste it inside my Amazon s3 directory and as soon as I go back to my management console in the TS5000 it's gonna start uploading this you'll notice it's already uploaded some it's gonna live upload and remove anything any files that you have in there uh, and allow you to be able to share those so some of these files are a couple megabytes it's going to depend on your bandwidth uh, at the time of how fast that can stay active but it is going to be in real time attempting its best to keep everything replicated that is inside this Amazon s3 directory so anything that you any share that you make you can only share one directory at a time with the service so you'll want to make a root directory for Amazon S3 and everything that you want to share in Amazon S3 has to go inside that to share to that bucket. So let's go back to the 7000 and we'll get that one going as well. Slightly different UI. We're gonna, looks like I've already created the S3 here. And so we go into extensions and web service support. We're going to modify the S3 support settings and we can use the exact same information that we use with the last one. So this one I created a local share Amazon S3, uh, standard HTTPS, bucket name is TS7000 on this one. We will go back to my web services. This key can be used for all Amazon S3 uh, information. So we don't have to have a separate one for each individual one. So if you have multiple that you want to back up and you can do it that way. Uh, we can likely also back up to the same bucket. I can back this up into uh, TS5000 as well um, as 7000. We're going to keep it separate for now. I'm going to copy this key. Uh, again, you can always copy it in here. There's no white space at the end of this. And we'll save these settings. This one does not have an activate button. As soon as you save those settings, it's going to automatically start doing it. So we can hop into our 7000 I have over here. Notice our Amazon S3 that I had generated, WBFS, Amazon S3. And we'll copy some files to here as well. Okay, now that those are there, we'll be able to go back to our bucket it's inside the 7000. And it's probably already updating, same as before. It's going to go as fast as my bandwidth can go. On the 5000, if you want to deactivate it as anything that you put in here, remember it's going to be using Amazon S3 bandwidth. So you have to monitor that bandwidth and be very sure of what you're, what you're using. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be looking at paying a lot of money. So just be very careful with that. Uh, we're going to go back to the 5000 to turn off S3, which is the blue button, and this is now off. I can drag and drop files into my uh, 5000, and you'll notice it is off, so there's, there's nothing to be had. We've just dis disabled it. So I'm going to go back into my 5000 bucket on here, and it is going to be you can remove these files if you want. Uh, in order to delete a bucket, you have to remove all files. So you could delete these files and then delete that bucket as well, which I can do here. Now that the bucket's cleared, select the bucket and delete. So 5,000's gone. Um, I'll do one more thing where I am going to put the same bucket from my 7,000 onto my 5,000. So again, I'm going to edit my settings. Notice it lost the key. The access key is going to have to be copied again. I'm going to change this to 7,000. We're going to use the same access key ID. Um, you I could use a separate one. Uh, in fact, let's, let's try that now. Being as I already have another key generated that has a plus, I can copy this one. And I can copy this C 
secret access key. Make sure that didn't have a white space. Yep. And now it's active again with the only the 7,000 bucket. So if we go to our 5,000, it has created what looks to be Amazon S3, WSS. It's regenerated what we have from the 5,000. So I now have my 5,000 and my 7,000 all with the same exact replicated data copying across through Amazon S3. So data uh, replication across multiple Terra stations using Amazon S3 cloud service. Uh, again, be very careful with your bandwidth. Um, if you're going to replicate this across multiple Terra stations using multiple sessions, that could chew up a lot of your bandwidth. So to disable the service on the 5,000 one more time, we're just going to uncheck that blue box. We're going to go back to the 7,000, and I'm going to modify these settings and disable and then save my settings. That is, you've noticed there, it pulled the key out, it's disabled, no longer synchronizing. Uh, in order to resynchronize this, I'll have to go get my web services key. So that is it. We'll try to post some documentation on this. Thank you.